Welcome to Choose Views with Richard Chu. Get ready to dive into a world of insightful conversations and thought-provoking discussions. As progressives, our job is to have an all-inclusive, full-on assault with all of our players. A show that will focus on moving our political, social, economic, gender, and cultural conversation forward. And all of our players means all of our players. It's Choose Views. And now, here's your host, Richard Chu. Good Friday morning, progressives. November 1st, everybody. Happy November 1st. You know, we always say, oh my God, I can't believe it's whatever the new date is or the new month. But welcome to the November 1st edition, 2024. Oh, choose View, 773-763-9278. Facebook Live, tune, tune in radio, Twitter Stream X, uh, iHeart Radio. Email me, of course, at Richard at WCPT820.com. And always, you can catch all of our shows by subscribing to WCPT Podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. There, you can get Choose Views, Joan Esposito, Live Local and Progressive, Driving It Home with Patty Vasquez, The Big Picture with Edwin Eisendram, and Out Chicago, and other great shows. Check us out at the Heartland Signal platform that we have, our digital news platform. Yes, heartlandsignal.com. That's where all the what? good stuff is. So guys, make yourselves over there and check us out and make sure you're checking out our shows on all of our platforms. So great to be with you this Friday. Uh, we'll be kind of running fast as we have been this whole week uh, with our special guest um, at 630. We're going to have a nice little 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 uh, dual forum with uh, my good friend Karen Byrne from True Blue Politics podcast and um, my other good friend Sue Cohen from Media Busters. Uh, will be with us this morning to kind of give us their, uh, as I like to put it, their uh, closing arguments about what's happening with this election and what it means. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to let these two ladies talk about what it means to them and what it means to their particular communities. So I'm looking forward to having both with us this morning. And then at 7 o'clock, we're going to have Mother Jones reporter Abby Vasoulis, national politics reporter. I'm excited to talk to Abby. Um, and uh, she's going to be with us for a bit in the 7 o'clock hour. And uh, there you go. We're going to make it through the morning, and we're going to be running hard. I've got some um, things I want to share with you in terms of my closing argument, if you will, meaning I know that the election is on Tuesday, and I know we're going to have a show on Monday. But we're hitting that weekend, and you guys always know what happens with the weekend or what I want to be able to do, I should say, for you guys as we head into the weekend, and that's to make absolutely certain that you guys have yourselves as armed as possible uh, to make it, you know, to, to, to make it through the weekend and to make it through the weekend strong. So there you go, guys. Um, the lines are already getting busy. So you guys give us a call. We want to get you on today. Uh, I know that this week's been tough to get some calls in because we've had we've had guests on uh, pretty much all segments of, of each show this week. But yeah, I mean, that's a tribute to you guys, the folks that want to be on our show that are guests. That's a tribute to the folks that that support us. So thank you to all. Um, but uh, let's uh, let's dive in real quickly, Alex, so we can uh, get in our, our, our normal choose, use news and our things to do this weekend. And then we'll grab some calls. Sound good. All right. Here we go, guys. Inflation did slow a little bit in September. A key gauge of uh, of key inflation um, is con- that con- inflation is continuing to cool, I should say, in September in line with investor expectations for more anticipated interest uh, rate cuts. The Personal con- uh, Consumption Expenditures Index, that's a lot to say, rose at an annual pace of 2.1%, down from 2.3% to, from the prior month. So that's good news. Uh, progress toward the Fed's 2% target paves the way for further reductions in borrowing costs following the first cut in four years last month. So we're heading in a good direction there, guys. Uber scores record operating profits. How about that? A record profit of just uh, over a billion dollars, a figure that far outstripped Wall Street's estimates. But the company's latest quarterly earnings weren't all good news. Gross bookings came in lower than expected, and the holiday season looks to be a kind of a middling one for the writing uh, writing, uh, agent. So they're doing their best to keep things moving in a good direction. So I know a lot of folks are Uber. Uh, I, 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 could, I should come up with a name for Uber riders. I'll call them, uh, I don't know, come up with a good name. But Uber riders, I guess we'll just stick with that, huh, Alex? Starbucks takes decisive actions 
What does that mean? Sales um, have been in a decline, and it's taking decisive actions, including, check this one out, the return of self-serve condiment stations. <laughs> Meaning you don't have to get your uh, coffee or whatever from Starbucks and have it all you know, designed by somebody else. You can add your own you know, cream and sugar. Customers have been clamoring to customize their own drinks as the coffee giant contends with issues such as understaffing and long wait times. Starbucks is has also looking to stop charging for non-dairy milk alternatives and is committed to holding U.S. prices steady under new CEO Brian Nichols. So he is making some changes. We've talked about him before. Starbucks uh, on an earning call Wednesday Uh, Nichols said that drinks need to be served within four minutes as a chain strives to boost transactions, which plummeted 10 percent this year in the most recent quarter of this year. Comcast has its eyes on a spinoff of the cable TV, considering amid a uh, continued cord cutting by subscribers in an early earnings call yesterday. President Mike Cavanaugh said a separation would not include a broadcast network, NBC, or streaming service, Peacock. NBC Universal's cable network's portfolio includes Bravo, E, Sci-Fi, as well as news networks, MSNBC, and CNBC. The announcement follows $15 billion in cable asset write-downs by Warner Brothers, Discovery, and Paramount as linear TV viewership declines. Although Comcast reported losing 365,000 more cable TV subscribers during the third quarter. Ah, They're making some changes there, too. So just a couple of quick hits this morning and choose the Choose Views uh, arena. Um, Let's take an earlier break. We'll come back. We'll talk about Chicago things to do. Got to keep it moving this morning because, as I said, we've got guests and we want to keep you guys uh, plugged into what's happening here on Choose Views. The number, of course, is 773-763-9278. We'll be right back. It's Choose View with Richard Chu on WCPT 820, where facts matter. Hey, guys, welcome back to Choose View 773-763-9278. If you're getting out and about this morning, a little bit chillier, Alex, a little bit chillier today than it has been this week. I mean, we went from, what, 80 to, to it's 41 this morning. So, guys, grab that that uh, windbreaker, that uh, that poncho. It's not going to rain today from what, I, from what I'm seeing, but it is going to be a little bit cooler. So make sure you got a little extra cover just in case, particularly if you're here in Chicago. And if you're looking for things to do this weekend, since it's Friday, I've got a few in mind. So check this out, guys. Destinos, 7th Chicago International Latino Theater Festival. has been going on for a couple weeks now. It's running through November 17th, but I always like to let you guys know it's a great event. Get out and about. Different uh, locations have different different. Um, Different shows and performances with wonderful lineups, uh, highlighting uh, music and, and theater from Brazil, Chile, Argentina, and Mexico. So find your way to one of the various locations in Chicago. Just Google uh, their website, Destino 7th Chicago International Latino Theater Festival. Another thing you can do uh, that's going to be over at the Museum of Contemporary Art is the Lit and Lo- Lit and Lose Festival. Chicago's Lit and Lose Festival returns with a fantastic roster of writers and artists from the U.S. and Mexico. The series uh, running through tomorrow at the Museum of Contemporary Art, 220 East Chicago Avenue. Also, Noises Off is a production at the Geffen Playhouse that I think you guys will appreciate up in Lincoln Park. And happening now through, uh, let's see, through, through, through November 3rd. There you go. Walking tour. Get out. Get some steps in. Make sure you're moving that body. Walking tour haunted by our dark side. The rise of and popularity of true crime TV shows tells us something. We are fascinated. Morbidity. Fast, morbidly, I should say, fascinated by true stories of death and destruction. Inside Chicago Walking Tours. That's a great, a great thing to do here in Chicago if you're visiting. But if you're from Chicago and you haven't done, you know, you're driving down the street, Alice, and you're like, man, I drive by this thing all the time. And you don't ever pop in and go see what that is. That happens in a big city. It happens in a small city. So get out, 
try to take on one of the walking tours. This weekend also, Sauced, 10-year anniversary night market for the past 10 years. Sauced, S-A-U-C-E-D, has welcomed hundreds of local vendors and thousands of customers to dozens of night markets throughout Chicago. Kind of kicking off um, in the uh, the, the Balmoral area, 2050 West Balmoral, near the Half Acre Beer Company. It's another good thing you can do. Little Women has March... Um, uh, is going to be uh, happening in the South Loop. Yeah, that'll that'll be a good event as well. That's happening through Sunday down in the South Loop of Chicago, 70 East Balbo at the Mal- the Merrill Ruskin Theater. And then the last one, which is kind of interesting, I thought the Ferris Bueller Guided Walking Tour. There you go. Uh, Art enthusiasts and Ferris Bueller fans, get ready to step into the iconic world of Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And that's taking place tomorrow. It's a 90-minute guided walking tour. <laughs> oh, man. Well, maybe they'll let you, let, let you drive around that Ferrari that he, uh, that he and his buddies took from his dad's place. It's an iconic movie. But check it out, guys. A good thing for you guys to do. Get out and about. Check out the walking tours. I think it'll be fun for you to get out and do something. All right, guys. This is that weekend. Uh, the final weekend before our national election, regional, local election. So... I uh, want to see you guys uh, making sure you're taking care of business in these last few days and in terms of folks that you know that are that are wanting to vote, but may not, may not have pulled together all the things that they need to be, have in place to actually get out and vote. Make sure you're doing that um, this weekend. And I'll talk a little bit more about in the 730 hour as we wrap up the show today. But for now, let's grab a couple of quick calls. Let's go to Michael here in Chicago. Hey, Michael, welcome to the show. What you got going on this morning? Well, I want to say this. I want to think uh, we got to save Illinois in this election. There's heavy voting in Florida, Texas, Georgia. In Florida, 5.7 million people have voted early. That's really good. Many of them are Democrats, but not all. There's some Republicans in there, too. But Illinois, because we're not a battleground state, uh, early voting is a little light. It's about averages. It's not as good as the other states. And we got to save Illinois for the Democratic Party and for because we're a pro-abortion state. I fanatically believe in the right of a woman to have an abortion. It's her body. we got to trust these women. And right now we have 17,000 women since 2022 have come from other states, have come from Indiana and Kentucky and Iowa and Missouri, where it's almost impossible to get an abortion. And they're coming to Illinois by train, by bus, by automobile to get an abortion abortion. But we got to keep Illinois uh, liberal to do this. We got to vote for the state representatives, the state senators, the whole ballot, the down ballot. We got to vote for Kamala Harris and 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 the attorney general. We got to do this. As you well, said, the entire ticket. Down, so we got to vote up, up and down for the these ticket. people. Yeah, up and down the ticket. We definitely have to vote blue. It's it's critically important right now. And the one thing I'll say, Michael, to kind of um, maybe add a little bit of um, uh, I don't know way of way of positioning this. Illinois is not a pro-abortion state. Illinois is a pro-women's and reproductive rights state because um, the, a lot of the women that have come to the, to Illinois from other states have come simply for reproductive care, reproductive medical care, not necessarily to get an abortion or specifically and only to get an abortion, but to get um, treatment. Uh, during pregnancy, and and if not it, during pregnancy, so one of the critical things that I think we have to talk about in that space, and why the governor and the lieutenant governor and and many of our state officials, to your point, have done such a great job, is it's welcoming women and families to come to Illinois to get the care that they need. Because not every woman that's coming is coming for an abortion. They're in states, to your point as well, that won't even offer them the ability to get treatment if they're having a difficult pregnancy that they don't want to terminate. They just want to get because those states have become so um, archaic. Uh, Michael, that they're not, they, you know, they can't even go to go to a facility to be to be treated. Okay. 
to get anything. Yeah. And so I, and, and, I appreciate your your point on that. But yes, we have to keep this state uh, open minded, liberal thinking, progressive, more more specifically thinking about the importance of letting women decide with their doctors and families what type of treatment and reproductive care and services they need among a variety of other things that we have to stay progressive about in Illinois. So could I say this? Sure. I live in Chicago and uh, I listen to the television. I pass out leaflets door to door, but I also listen to the television and it's loaded with ads, uh, many of them Democratic, and it's for Kamala Harris, but t- television ads. And the big issue on the television, ABC, CBS, NBC in Chicago now is the abortion issue. And the abortion issue is in on Illinois uh, 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 politicians running. It's also on Wisconsin yeah. politicians, Indiana politicians. But, but the last three or four weeks, uh, the airwaves are taken over with the abortion issue. So it's a very hot issue, and we have to save Illinois for total reproduction care, all kind of reproduction care. Absolutely. You noticed a couple of days ago, a, a woman, another another woman died in Texas because she could not get a, a, a abortion. She had a miscarriage and she died in Texas. Several women have died in Texas because they could not get reproduction help. And And it's it's sad. And and that's so, so it's great that you're mentioning that and highlighting that again, but that's the reason that we have to keep our state progressive in that space. So thanks Michael, as always for your contributions to the show. Have a great day and a good weekend. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Bye now. All right. uh, Let's see. Let's see. Let's go to Rick in Florida. Good morning, Rick. Welcome to Choose Views. I understand that uh, you're uh, you've got some comments about signs. Richard, my friend. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I have. <laughs> well, you guys um, don't know. That, l- 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 let me give a proper introduction, Alex. Do we do we, do we have any of course. do we have any introduction music we can play? Or oh, there we go, something like that. <laughs> Rick is Rick is a Chicago one. That's a, that's a transplant. Our, our, our man on the street down in Florida, giving us some updates as to Florida, what's yeah. happening in Florida and some of the signs and well, other things that he's observed. You, you. So there you go. Nice little yeah, intro so for I you. Have much appreciated, and right back at you. Um, it so I've been a. Uh, you know, a winter snowbird uh, from Chicago for the last eight or so years. And, you know, so this is now, so we uh, were, we drove down in 2016, we drove down in 2020, we drove again this year. So for three presidential races, and um, this race is the first time that we have seen far more Billboard. I'm talking about the big giant billboards in the state of Indiana, in the state of Kentucky, in the state of Tennessee, in the state of Georgia, and the state of Florida. The entire trip down, we saw three or four times to one favoring Kamala Harris. And when when we saw five massive billboards in the state of Florida along um, Interstate 75, I could not believe what I was seeing. And in the state of Georgia along I-75, we saw one Trump billboard. In the state of Georgia? Even in, yeah, in the state of Georgia, sorry, in the state of Georgia and in Marjorie Taylor Greene's district, Mm -hmm. we didn't see one Trump billboard. But we saw a Kamala billboard. Did you see any? Sean, did you see any Sean Harris uh, billboards or signs who's running against her in uh, in Georgia? You know, I didn't. Okay. Okay. I, I, I didn't That's see fair. any big billboards but, along along the interstate. But you saw a lot um, of Kamala Harris signs and billboards. A lot, a lot, a lot of Kamala, um, uh, yeah, uh, Harris and Wall signs, and um, we're. We currently have a layover in um, St. Pete for a few days, and we we there are uh, Harris Walls uh, yard signs. Where you look, I mean it, it's unbelievable. Yesterday was the first time uh, we saw some guy in a big 
big redneck uh, pickup truck that had uh, some derogatory commentary um, in the form of a flag on the back of his truck. And but that's it. This is Richard. This is nothing like what we saw in 2020. It's 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 completely night night and day. And I keep shaking my head and saying, oh, my God, am, am I really in the state of Florida? So that that I find to be um, extremely encouraging. And that includes we've seen very, very few Trump yard signs. And ironically, of all the states we've been to in the last week, I also was in Wisconsin and I, you know, I, I have family in Waukesha County, which is so red, it's crazy. But Waukesha County, I've seen more Trump signs, and that's exactly what I expected. And that's about the only place where I have seen a mass conglomerate of Trump signs this whole way. So it really, you know, it really, really fires me up. That's um, great. Uh, yeah. And then I, I, you know, if I could, I just wanted to share a couple ideas with you or a couple, uh, just a couple brief stories with you. Um, the friends that I'm uh, currently staying with in St. Petersburg, he has, a, uh, my friend has a brother who's 77 years old, who has never, ever voted in his life. And he registered to vote in Florida. And yesterday he cast his first ever presidential vote for Harris. Wow. Okay. And then, and that, yeah, exactly. Huge clap on that one. And then what gets even better is this friend I'm staying with is originally from Pennsylvania. His uh, uncle, who has been a lifelong Republican in Pennsylvania, who voted for Donald Trump in 2016 and 2020, cast his vote for Kamala Harris. Wow. I mean, un. Unbelievable, Richard. I'm seeing stuff that's so crazy. And then one more quick story. I I know you have a really a really busy schedule today. No, no, no. You're part but of the show. One more story. Okay, thank you, my friend. Um, my cousin. I have a cousin that lives in uh, extreme northern Wisconsin. Um, by the uh, it borders the Upper Michigan Upper Peninsula um, border. She was at a. She has a couple of children, so you know she was at an, an uh, a uh, sporting event at somebody's uh, an after sporting event party at one of her friends' house. And um, as I'm sure you're aware, uh, maybe your audience is, but up in northern Wisconsin, it is red, 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 red. And my cousin and her happen, her husband happened to be one of the you know lone wolves out there who are who are uh, true uh, progressives. And they were at, so anyway, they were at this party and all of the adults, there were about 12 or 14 adults in, uh, in the living room. And the subject naturally turned to um, politics. And all the men are saying, oh yeah, Trump's going to win. Trump's our man, blah, blah, blah. Okay. The wives remained very silent and nobody said anything. <laughs> One of the women said, surprise, right? One of the women said, oh, I'm going to go in the kitchen and uh, grab one of the appetizer trays. Okay. Well, ironically, the other women followed her into the <laughs> kitchen and they said, they said, if my husband thinks I'm voting for Trump, he's going to be in for a big surprise a rude awakening. <laughs> so it's exactly what we've been starting to hear that, you know, the women are being silent because they don't want to confront their husbands, but they are not voting for Donald Trump. It's and, a, it's and a, I, it's you a know really what? big thing right now that 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 conversation, and I think that's why what came out of Texas a few uh, months ago, if you uh, uh, remember that there were there's this report that women in Texas were, were being told that their husbands could actually find out how they voted, 
and which is complete BS yeah. unless there's some sort of canary going on. But what an encouraging bit of right. information in terms of all three of those things. A gentleman it, who's never voted is re- registered yeah. to vote. Uh, a person right. that is, right. is, is voted Republican all life is, is, is switched. And then the other, this, this is the neutron bomb. And that's women. They're basically, you know, holding their, yeah. holding their powder, holding their fire. But yeah. they're, they're going to vote in a direction that, is that what their husbands think they're going to vote in? I've got uh, Karen Byrne on, and um, uh, we'll have a yeah. friend, another friend, Sue Cohen from um, uh, from Maryland, joining us in the six thirty hour, and they're going to talk about that as well. So I'm excited to hear uh, that you've got some on the ground uh, things that uh, that you that you've experienced. So, Rick, thanks, man, for yeah. calling yeah. in. Thank you, and Thank uh, you. En- yeah. enjoy your stay and and enjoy this weekend. And we get fired up for next next Tuesday. Thank you. All right, we, will, we will be talking. Thank Absolutely. you for allowing and, me to, f- to and fo- call and in. Give us, a holler, and give us a holler on Monday or Tuesday to kind of see what you're seeing in terms of I, day of voting, um, if, you, if you don't mind, because I'd be curious to see what you're seeing. I, yeah, I would love to. Just one, one really just quick thing. Last night um, we were driving, uh, and I'm in, like I said, I'm in St. Pet- St. Petersburg right now, and um, when we were driving home from from dinner was about 7 p.m. We drove past one of the um, uh, polling booths, the, the, the uh, you know early early voting booths. Mm-hmm. The entire parking lot was filled with people and cars, and the line was out the door for people voting early. It's I mean people are getting out. That's exciting. People are getting out. That's so exciting. It's very exciting. So anyway. Thank you. Thank you for uh, for your time, Richard. And I'll give you a call on Monday or Tuesday. Sounds good. Have, Have a, great, a great weekend, great man. Weekend. Thanks for the call. Okay. Thank All you, right, Richard. guys. That's you that, bet. That's, that's our man, Rick in Florida, giving us the lowdown of what's happening in that area and his drive to the, to the state, through the states. 773-763-9278. When we come back, we've got two great guests on the show. Can't wait. We'll be right back. It's Chew's View with Richard Chew on WCPT 820, Chicago's progressive talk. Hey, guys, welcome back to Chew's Views. Yes, it's Friday, 773-763-9278. And if it's Friday, there's things to talk about and to do in Chicago. There's also Karen Byrne from True Blue Politics riding with us this morning. And I got a special additional guest riding with us, and that's Sue Cohen, all the way from Maryland. Good morning. How are you guys? Good morning, Richard. <laughs> so, 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 so listen, the hardest thing about this next segment is going to be not talking over each other because the three of us are all fools yeah. and we laugh and we have fun <laughs> and we have a doggone good time. So it's going to be hard to not talk over each other and, and, and laugh at this crazy a person known as Donald Trump, who's, who is, is, um, you know, still making a fool of himself in these last few days. But welcome to the show, guys. And what I really want to talk about and want you guys to talk about more specifically is sort of your final argument, your closing argument about what's so important and why things are so important with this upcoming election. And obviously why we have to not only elect Vice President Harris and Governor Walls, but we have to hold the Senate. We have to flip back the House yeah. and what that means to all of us across the board. So, you know, I'll start. Sue, you haven't you haven't been on in a while. So. So, Karen, let's let's get, let's give Sue the, the first bite of the apple um, and, Absolutely. And, and, and and have us have us hear what you've got to say this morning. Sue, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me back. And hi, Karen. Good morning to you. And I'm going to speak hi, a little bit, Karen and I. Hi, honey. Between us, we have um, five children, a pack of grandchildren. I think we have something like uh, eight grandchildren. And so if you need to understand what we are fighting for, you can look right there. We're fighting for their futures. Uh, we're fighting for all children to be loved, all people to be loved, respected, tolerant, 
caring, hopeful, joyful. And there's only one candidate and one party in this election that speaks to the future of the glorious tapestry that America is. And I use the term tapestry rather than melting pot because all of us, all of where we come from, come together to make this glorious quilt, this tapestry of what America is. We don't all blend to become the same. We hold the uniqueness as we embrace our being American. And as the daughter of Holocaust survivors, you know, my own family didn't come here till 1949. So I think that, you know, we both come from very different backgrounds, but where our commitment to the love of this country comes is that we know that patriotism is when you stand for your country. You take an oath to a constitution. You don't take an oath to a Bible. You don't take an oath to a person. Uh, my parents mm-hmm. saw what happened by, when, when Hitler was and when there was an oath only to a person. So I think just generally speaking, um, and, and of course, watching the way women have been mercifully tortured, and I do mean tortured, and murdered by Republicans. The people in Texas, the people in Florida are murdering women legally, and that is not okay. It will never be okay. And before I finish, I just want to say I have a granddaughter applying to colleges right now, and she and her mom and I um, may be very different people, but she's not applying to any school in any state where her rights might be restricted. And I support her 100 percent. So that that is the the last statement that you just made. And thank for thank you for everything you opened with. But the Mm -hmm. last statement you just made is something that is powerful and important to stay on top of. And in in African-American parents are doing their version of that when it comes to um, children applying to colleges where there are. Uh, uh, racial issues that are spiking up in the, in particular states. And then NAACP has said to, to black parents, don't send your children to Florida for college or to Missouri. Um, they're, they're leaning hard against some of the, uh, you know, the, the possibilities of going to school in Texas. Um, so I hear that in a, and it took, again, this goes back to your, one of your initial points about this fabric that we're all a part of different backgrounds. I'm a guy, you guys are ladies, but we all have that mm-hmm. similar connection, which is to move this doggone thing forward. Like vice president Harris says, we're not going back. So I appreciate you adding that to the, to the conversation, Sue, regarding uh, your granddaughter and, and applications for college. That's, that's great, great grandparenting and parenting. So kudos <laughs> to you guys, Karen, what you got to say this morning? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, my gosh, I mean, everything that Sue said, and, um, you know, now I am uh, a descendant of immigrants. Um, On one side, going back to the um, Declaration of Independence. On the other side, um, I think great-grandfather from Northern Ireland. Um, So, you know, everything that Sue just said is exactly why um, I am fighting so hard out here as well. I have, I, I am a nana um, to two beautiful children, um, Ashton and Jelena, and um, I fight for their future uh, with a clean environment. Um, my uh, my daughters, my um, nieces, um, for having safe access to reproductive care. And I think, you know, Michael um, from Chicago called in a bit a while ago, and he's, he's absolutely correct. Um, you know, we do have all of these states, and you also said very correctly that Illinois is a safe haven and a place where women in these red states that are um, have um, very restricted uh, abortion abortion bans, um, and also, to your point, access to reproductive health care. Um, our good friend Anita from San Antonio, her daughter is having a very difficult time even finding a gynecologist. 
down in Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, my niece, Lydia, who lives down there, um, I, I mean, I have been riding her since she moved down there to make sure that she got registered to vote. I made her take a picture of her voter registration card. <laughs> I made her take a picture of her vote. I voted sticker and send it to send it to me um, because this is this is the imperative. You know, um, if Donald Trump and J.D. Vance get in, we absolutely will lose all of our rights. And it doesn't matter if you're in the bluest states um, of Illinois, Maryland, California. Um, We are also going to be affected, and we are going to, um, the women who need um, this kind of care are going to lose access to that. And we have got to remember that. And then also remember that we can never again take our system of government, our democracy, this multi-racial, multicultural democracy for granted again. Nope. We this can't. Needs to be the beginning to everybody understanding that every election truly does matter. We were during, be, before we came on the air this morning, and, and thank you both for those very heartfelt and cogent and intellectual observations as to where we are. Before we came on the air today, guys, Alex and I were talking about after the election, and that's been a big conversation here at the station about after the election and the things that I'm going to be working on, and Alex and I are putting our heads together on some things that we're going to be doing. But the number one thing after the election that all of us have to do is stay focused like never before, because we let's let's be honest, if we take a little bit of responsibility as progressives, some of this lands in our lap as it relates to taking our foot off the gas and yielding some 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 uh, some territory. We can't do that anymore. We don't have that luxury ever, ever again, as long as we are alive, because it's it's been too damn hard to work our way back to a point where we uh, that we where we're um, where we reclaiming our time, reclaiming our territory. We can't do that again. We, we can't yield any space. We can't yield any any uh, any areas of, of communication, which is why, you know, I love what you're doing so with your your media busters work um i gotta ask a question that's a local question sue what's happening yes. with the with the election uh, with the with the race for angela also brooks how is she doing how do you think she's doing i do think she's gonna win i think had biden stayed in it would have been a tougher call because people hogan has, is a total hypocrite and focus uh, i'm telling me. He, he hid under his desk for the first four years of the administration. He's never liked Trump, but he doesn't have any courage, and he's never stood up against him or against his own party. When he says he's an independent voice, he's a flat-out liar. He voted against abortion access, and he looks at what he is running on, and this is what's so infuriating for those of us who still have brains and remember things, is that he's running on all of the bills that he vetoed but were overridden, because Annapolis the Maryland is very blue, and our House and our Senate at the state level are uh, veto-proof. So now he's taking those bills and saying, look what I did, and he did none of them. Angela's very well-liked. She's supported by the entire uh, Democratic Party, and I think because she will get that extra bump because we are so in love with the positive message of Kamala and Tim. So I, I think we're okay. We have a very competitive race in Congressional 6, where there's another Trumper. And I just, to the point of taking ourselves off, the, taking our eye off the ball or, you know, foot off the gas, I just want to say this. I think what we didn't realize is the venal cruelty and hypocrisy of a Republican Party that has lost its way completely. I think all of us who deal in good faith, who tell the truth, who say, let's have a discussion about issues, don't realize that these people are have, have will lie with impunity. They lie, they cheat, they steal. And I'm only going to give you one point, and then I'll see my mouth <laughs> and just say, no. think about the fact that they are and continue to work so hard to keep our mm. military and our overseas citizens from voting. Yep. Think about yeah. how many lawsuits 
They are filing and continue to file. They just say, well, you know, if you don't live in the country, you don't matter. Excuse me, we're all citizens. When did you give up your right to vote? Yep. That's a, such a mm-hmm. th- th- uh, lie, cheat, steal, uh, venal. Yes. I mean, this, 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 this is these are these are words, Karen, that comes from someone that's read a few books, mm-hmm. as I as I think Sue has in her in her lifetime. Mm-hmm. So shout out to you, Sue, in that space. But that's spot on. I mean, Karen, you and I talk about mm-hmm. this all the time. Sue, you hear the conversations, and you've been a part of the messaging that people need to hear and see, and that's the destructive things that will happen with Project 2025 because they're already taking place in so many states. And so, you know, on Fridays, what we've been doing the last few months, Sue, is as Karen and I have been peeling apart, really going back to probably March or April, the different parts of Project mm-hmm. 2025. And there's nobody... Yep. In, there's there, I, it was said um, the other day by Allison Gill. I had her on uh, as, a, as a pre-recorded interview late last week. What she said, which was spot on, and that is Project Twenty Twenty Five. There's something in there for everybody, and that was meant as a little bit of a, so a bit of sarcasm. But nobody is gonna not, nobody's gonna be excluded Mm-mm. from Project Twenty Twenty Five. And I think that, mm. you know, uh, shout out to you, Karen, shout out to you, Sue, for how much work you guys have put in talking about it the last four to six months. And I think that 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 it's been it's it's resonated with people. And talk about this well, for, for a little bit. Each of you just just, just take a half a minute yeah. and, and just hit on that real quickly, uh, Karen, and then Sue. Well. Listen, first of all, I have to give pro- huge props to Heidi Bayrick and Wendy Vi of uh, Global Project Against Hate and Extremism. These ladies um, have been doing the work um, and studying Project 2025. It was because of them that a year ago I found out about it. Um, and Anita and I had been talking about it on our podcast, True Blue Politics, um, a year ago. We've got we've logged 24 episodes, by the way. Um, so we've been doing this for about a year now. And, um, you know, so huge props to the early warning um, systems um, like Heidi and, and Wendy. Um, they really did do a great job at just at least initially getting the job out there without the work of women like them, um, I don't think that uh, Taraji uh, P. Henson would have uh, said what she said. At, and that is really when it gained tra- traction. Yeah. But yes, you are right. It is There is something in it for everybody. And obviously, as a woman, um, I am very concerned about it with with the, you know, the subject that we were just talking about, um, uh, abortion access and reproductive um, access. Um, but also, what we need to remember, too, if you remember family separation, that was headed by Tom Homan. Yep. He is tapped to be a, a part of this administration should Donald Trump get uh, installed again. So that means, and Donald Trump, I think it was yesterday, gave a speech where he talked about the mass deportations being bloody. Mm-hmm. So, to all, I mean, listen, we know that white women and white men are the biggest problem right now as far as, you know, voting for Republicans um, and Donald Trump in particular. But to our Latino friends, they are not going to discern whether you are here legally, natural born, nope. or, you know, documented, undocumented. They are going to round people up. They're going to look at that your skin color. Understand. They're going to look at your skin that's color it. and they're going to look at your 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 uh, your name. And that's how they're going to start. So it, that's that's a great point. Karen, Sue, what do you have to say as we wrap up? I would like your listeners to hear this. I can reduce Project 2025 into five words. No one will be safe. That's right. Project 2025 will harm every single American in this country, every single person in this country. And so very quickly, let me explain what it is and what Project 2025 takes its 
it's taking growing from. The first thing they did was shut down the press. The second thing is they ended Congress. They, all legislation came from the executive branch. They then co-opted all the judges. You either ruled the way you were told to or you died. There was no wiggle room. They killed you. So the courts are gone. The legislature is gone. All power emanates from the unitary executive. In other words, the dictator. And then the press gets shut down right away, which makes our fury at corporate media obeying and they're calling it anticipatory obedience, self-censorship, when they're just the first people who are going to be shut down. You do. And then your rights go. And anyone who thinks women's rights are the only thing are not paying attention. And then what happens to all these greedy billionaires who have our league right now with Trump and with Project 2025 is they've never studied history. So they never studied the word renationalization. Yep. Because after Trump and his cohorts um, bankrupt the U.S. Treasury, where are they going to get the money? They're going to nationalize all the private businesses and take the money. Yep. That's it, 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 the short sightedness mm-hmm. of people is astounding. Transferring. Can, pro- can I say, can I? Go ahead. Go ahead yeah. Karen. Can I say, can I say really quick too? you know, something that they're not even thinking about, you know, all these people that say they care so much about the economy. OK, first of all, ignoring the fact that we have a great economy, what do they think is going to happen when the mass deportations happen? And not only that, but when you make women second and third class citizens, we are a huge part of the consumers in this country. There are marketing companies that specifically market to us. We are the consumers in this country, and you should you reduce us, take away our autonomy, our financial, our bodily autonomy, yep. and y'all are screwed. That's right. I mean, it's and that's why uh, paying attention to this is so critically important. And I go back to what I said about we don't have the luxury this time after this election to take our feet off the gas and to take our eye off the ball, uh, to use uh, Sue's phrase. Guys, listen, um, (laughs) I said we we succeeded in one thing, and that is we didn't we didn't (laughs) laugh so much and and laugh over each other, which is a huge one for the three of us to to not do or to to accomplish. (laughs) But I am Yay. so jo- so joy to have had you both on this morning. We after the election, we will do this again on a Friday. It will be fun and wrap up yeah. real quickly with this. Just let every know everyone know where they can find you. Karen, you go first, and then Sue let it, let everybody know how they can find you on social media. Go for it, Karen. Okay, so I am on um, Twitter. K I resist. Um, I am on also True Blue Politics podcast. Um, I was a co-founder of Media Busters with Sue, but Sue has really taken it and run with it. So I'm giving her full credit for that. What's been going on there? But um, yeah, we are we are um, all very much on social media. Sue's not on Facebook though, but I am. Go for um, it, Sue. Under my my full okay. name. Yep. <laughs> And Twitter and on Twitter, threads and Instagram at Media Buster Six. You can find me. And then at Sue in Rockville, which is how I'm known via the Stephanie Miller show. I am on Mastodon, Spoutable, uh, Threads at Threads and um I, I can't even keep track on Instagram. <laughs> and then I am on I my know, personal right? account on Twitter. But I'm not even going to add it because there's too many names and numbers. So it's my secret account. <laughs> there you go. Well, check check them both Thank out. Thank you so I, much, Richard. Oh, my pleasure. I, I think everybody that's listening, you. if you if you go to. Uh, True Blue Politics podcast, you'll find Karen's work there. If you go to Media Buster 6 on on uh, social media, you'll find Sue's primary. Those are sort of the, we'll call those mm-hmm. the, the top of the heap places where you can find so much great <laughs> content that these ladies, these wonderful ladies put out on social media. I have been having a ball this morning and I'm so glad you guys have been able to be with us and thank you for taking a little bit of time to land your plane here so we could chat a little bit. Have great weekends, mm-hmm. and um, we'll, we'll, do, we'll, we'll do the three of us will do this again sometime. But you guys have a great weekend, and, and we'll talk soon. Okay. Okay, and Richard, special shout out to the. Yes, go Kamala. Special shout out to the sexy liberals out there. I'm getting on a plane at one o'clock to go to L.A. Woo-hoo. There you go. Be safe, travel, have a good time. Give <laughs> us a shout out when you're there. One. 
All right, guys, be well. Oh, yeah, you know it. Love Bye-bye. you guys. Love Bye. you guys. Bye now. All right, Sue and Karen. How about that? At the same time, we got to take a quick break, but um, no, no break. We're going to keep it moving. All right, we'll keep it moving. There you go. Well, then why don't we do this? Why don't we uh, take a quick call? We got, we got enough time. time? All right, let's uh, let's go to, uh, da, 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 da. who should we go to? Let's go to Phil in Park Ridge. Hey, Phil, welcome to the show. Thank you for taking my call. Uh, quick, something just to follow up on the past conversation you had. You know, we're already losing sort of one right, and that's freedom of the press. Look at the newspapers that refuse to endorse a candidate one way or the other. Yeah. It, it, it goes, it that's go, not what, go ahead. I'm sorry, Phil. You, you got it. You got it. Uh, but, but that's not what I wanted to talk about. Um, briefly, I was in Europe in in April, and I was traveling in Germany. And the Europe. this is a follow-up to the earlier conversation you had this week. And anyway, a lot of the people in Europe were just asking, what is with Trump and how could he ever be supported? And through conversations, they kept saying, well, you know, Trump was elected. And I asked the question, I said, at what point did people that voted for, I'm sorry, they were saying that Hitler was elected. Right. And I said, at what point did the people realize that they made a mistake once they had Hitler was in office, and the one answer that I got was when the first bombs started to fall on Germany. Mm. So my question is, if Trump does get elected, what will be the bomb that hits us that make all these people wake up? Well, the mistake that they've made. I think Philip. I don't know the answer to that question, but my thought it kind of goes back to something that that Sue and and Karen just said from our previous uh, uh, segment, and that's going to be when people who didn't think they were going to be touched by Project Twenty Twenty Five start having rights taken away and start having um, you know uh, resources captured by uh, the government because Project Twenty Twenty Five is their authoritarian playbook. That I think is when. Uh, and, and I hate to put it that way, but candidly, a lot of people in America just don't pay attention enough. They just don't. And that's going to yeah. be the shock to the system. So we'll see what happens. But, Philip, we got to hit a break because we're at the top of the okay. hour. But thank you for calling in and thank you for your contribution. Have a great weekend. Stay safe, Philip. All right. And thank you very much. I love your show, too. Thank, thank you, man. Be well. Take, take care now. All right, guys. We got to take a quick break. 773-763-9278. We'll get your calls on the backside of the next segment. Stay with us. Welcome to Choose Views with Richard Chu. Get ready to dive into a world of insightful conversations and thought-provoking discussions. As progressives, our job is to have an all-inclusive, full-on assault with all of our players. A show that will focus on moving our political, social, economic, gender, and cultural conversation forward. And all of our players means all of our players. It's Choose View. And now, here's your host, Richard Chu. Hey, hey, guys. Welcome back to Choose View 773. 773- 763-9278. Today, from 2 to 5 p.m., Joan Esposito will be taking your calls for the first half of the show. Later, she'll talk to Michael uh, Kobanargi, Regional Director for the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Joan Esposito, live, local, and progressive weekdays, 2 to 5 on WCPT 820 and Heartland Signal. Tonight, don't miss this, 5 to 7, Emmy Award-winning comedian Dwayne Kennedy will get be guest hosting Driving at Home with Patty Vasquez. Tomorrow, Saturday from 1 to 4 p.m., the big picture, Edwin Eisendraft will be talking to Wisconsin Democratic Party Chair Ben Wickler, uh, Michigan De- Democratic Chair uh, Lavora Barnes, and North Carolina Democratic Party um, Chair Anderson Clayton, plus voting rights reporter for The Guardian, Sam Levine, and journalist Donna Ladd. The big picture with Edwin Eisendraft, Saturdays, 1 to 4, WCPT 820, and yes, Heartland Signal. You all better make it over there. Did you guys know that WCPT's election coverage is sponsored by the Chicago Federation of Labor? That's right. Give them an applause. Standing up for people, working people in Cook County. There you go. Now, on election night, you've heard it before. Bricklayers uh, Union out in um, in Elmhurst. That's where we be, we'll be, we will be broadcasting from 2 to 10 p.m. So Joan will be out there. Come see Joan. Come see me. Come see Patty. 
Our special guest is hosted by Bricklayers Union, ADC1 of Illinois, Union Proud Warrior, State Reps Diana Blair, uh, Sherlock, and Anastavi Murray, County uh, Board a Member List Chaplain, and Victory Fund Radio host Ken Mejia Beal. So check us out. You guys want to... By doing that, you can to attend the event. Please register, even still today, and of course over the weekend and on Monday at facebook.com slash wcpt eight twenty slash events, or text us at seven seven three seven six three nine two seven eight, and we'll send you the link. So we'll be there from two to ten p.m. on Election Day at the Bricklayers Hall in Union Hall. That's at six sixty North Industrial Drive near York and two ninety in Elmhurst. We hope to see you guys there. And by the way, I heard this guy, uh, this show, Choose Views, now has its own podcast, too, actually. Choose Views, full episodes, and Choose Views, featured interviews. You can get those by subscribing to one or both. It'll just search Choose Views wherever you get your podcasts or get your podcast links by visiting heartlandsignal.com forward slash choose dash views. All the stuff that we've done there, you can find. So check us out. All right, keep listening to WCPT and all of my good radio partners that we have. Uh, and, over, and most definitely, uh, check us out over at heartlandsignal.com. Uh, there are great articles there, as we talk about every day. Uh, a good one today, uh, Bernie Marino, um, once again, stepping on his tongue, talking about he aced. I mean, Alex, how do you ace the, the citizenship, citizenship test? It's pass-fail. Acing something means that you got a grade on a scale, on a scale. It's it's a it's a it's a pass fail exam. What well, Knucklehead Incorporated? Um, there's so many great ones over there. We've got a guest on hold, so I don't want to uh, take up too much more of time as we um, uh, work toward getting our guests on the air. It's been a great morning, and I appreciate uh, you guys hanging with us. But this morning, we have one of the top reporters in the country. Abby Vasoulis of Mother Jones with us here on Choose Views on WCPT and Heartland Signal. Abby, good morning to you and welcome to the show. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, listen, not everybody, I, I heard this say, uh, statement the other day that people have stopped reading newspapers and reading magazines. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a guy that had a subscription to pretty much every magazine that was out there going back you know, 10, 20, 30 years. I, I mean, I had a subscription to everything. And largely because, I mean, I will, I'll share this with you. You may laugh at me. I didn't read the magazine cover to cover. I would go to the contents page. <laughs> See, I told you. I would go to the contents page, Abby, and go, okay, those are two or three things I'm interested in. And it could be, you know, uh, it could have been photography magazine as well as it could have been, you know, something that was specific about politics or economics or business. And I would consume information from magazines that way. Anybody that's known me over the years knows that you come to my house and there'd be magazines, st stacks of them. You're in that business. You've been writing for a long time and people know, I, I think people have seen a change and a transfer in terms of how many, um, how much people are consuming printed media. So I want to kind of dive in there first and then we'll get into talking about what's happening with politics in the election. What's your observation? What's happening in that space as someone who's in that space? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, like you, I subscribe to a lot of magazines, um, so many that uh, it feels that I, I don't have time to read them cover to cover because <laughs> when they come, I haven't finished the last one. Um, but I've noticed over the years that um, people are uh, turned away from politics at times because it seems um, to them to be... Uh, hyper polarized, um, and so diving into to magazines seems like spending what little time you have on um, on things that are contentious. But what I've found about magazines is that it's such a good news consuming experience. You're not watching people fight each other on TV. Uh, you're not reading a boring. Uh, news clip that's that just gets straight to the point magazines are such an enjoyable reading experience because they bring you into places that you can't go yourself mm -hmm. you know they're 
um, narratives of, of people behind closed doors. And, and the story that we're about to talk about is this narrative of um, all these really great election workers um, who are doing their best to, um, to batten down the hatches ahead of an election day. These are both Republicans and Democrats um, doing some pretty special things. So I think that magazines are having a little bit of a resurgence. You can see that The Atlantic recently um, announced that they're going from 10 uh, print issues a year to 12. So I feel hopeful and optimistic about the future of of print magazines because I think people are remembering and realizing what a good experience they can be. Yeah, I mean, I, and and the reason I wanted to talk a little bit about this, and then we'll pivot to to um, what you're currently working on, is that I, you know, like you, I read a lot, read a lot, always read lots of magazines, and one of the things that um, I find interesting is that whenever I travel, I tend to buy more magazines now because the old newsstands. I mean, Chicago is a big city. We had newsstands on the corner, you know, State and Madison. You, you, there were newspaper vendors, and they were selling magazines and all the rest. You've seen it when you travel to New York and on your travels throughout the world, frankly. But I, you know, find now that I buy more magazines when I'm about to get on an airplane because there's that newsstand, you know, store in the airport and I can pick up a couple, three, uh, at, at that point. And that's one of the things that's missing also is the, 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 um, the, the presence of newsstands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, but think about how great it is to be able to like put your phone away for three hours on a flight. Like the Wi-Fi isn't great anyway. So to be able to consume, um, information and media like planes and traveling is some of the best time to do it. Yep, I agree. That's I, I. I don't even take a book with me anymore when I travel. I typically just buy two or three magazines because I know I'll get through them at some point on the trip. If it's not on the plane, it's once we you know get to the destination. So, thank you for for uh, for uh, humoring me in that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but of I knew course. I knew you would appreciate it given the work that you've done. Talk about what's going on right now, uh, Abby. Give us a the lowdown of what you're seeing and and what you're working on in this current space that we're in. Yeah, so I just finished a feature story um, last week about um, all the things that election officials are doing to prepare for Election Day. Um, These are Republicans and Democrats. They're elected and appointed officials. Um, And obviously in 2020, they experienced a lot of threats. Um, and anxiety and fear. Um, I interviewed a a woman named Tina Barton, who was a Republican election official in Michigan. And uh, there were, there was a news conference in which the then head of the Republican national committee pointed out her County as a place where illegal votes were happening. And That resulted in Tina getting death threats. Uh, An anonymous man called and left her a voicemail threatening to bring a knife to her throat and to kill her and her family. Um, And that was understandably very upsetting and scary. And she's just one example. That was happening all over the country. And if I recall, she's she's a veteran, right? She is not a veteran, but she's married to someone in law enforcement. And I think the interesting thing is that she's she's a Republican and people were afraid people were calling and threatening her because they thought that she was stealing votes from uh, from Republicans. But she herself is a Republican. Mm. Um, And so that is not the anomaly anymore that's that's the norm about 40 percent of election officials have experienced threats and so as we're going into this 2024 election cycle things are just as contentious if not more contentious you have people laying the groundwork already that the election is not fair that people are voting illegally that the processes are not happening as they should and so the threats are continuing um there have been about 15 to 20 um, secretaries of state and other election officials that have received uh, packages or that they've been the intended recipient of packages that contain a a mysterious white powder. Um, And luckily those have not been (laughs) deemed to actually be a dangerous powder, but the the intention is to scare. And so what my reporting about though is actually kind of hopeful. It's about how these election officials have kind of banded together. They used to work in silos, but now 
they are communicating with each other and communicating with law enforcement to come up with plans for how they can respond to mysterious substances and bomb threats and protests where people are brandishing guns. Um, And it's not amazing that they have to do that, but I think it's amazing that they had the foresight to, to prepare for the worst in case it does happen. And so these groups didn't exist in 2020 and now they do. And I think that's great. You know, the, the situation that took place with uh, Governor Whitmer a few years ago where they were, you know, you, you know the story um, in terms of mm-hmm. these guys trying to kidnap her and, and you know, uh, go down that path. Uh, I think got a lot of people's attention that folks were serious in, the, in their threats, crazy as they may be uh, and isolated as they may be. But folks were, there, were serious about threatening uh, public officials. And this was had nothing to specifically do with an election. It had to do with her during the, the pandemic saying, listen, y'all got to stay home. Let's get the, let's get our arms around this thing and, and, and try to fix it and go forward. She was trying to help save people's lives. And you get these knuckleheads that wanted to come after her and kidnap her and kill her. Um, and now that's sort of, for lack of better words, blossomed into election officials that are just trying to make it easy for people to vote. Did you see the situation, Abby, of what took place down in South Carolina the day before yesterday um, at a voting um, location where a guy came into the place and he had on a, um, for lack of better words, a, a hat that was wearing a cap that spoke about, you know, make America great again. And the ladies there asked him to take it off. And it, it got ugly. Have you seen that video yet, that video clip? I have not seen that video clip, but actually that's one of the exact scenarios that these groups are training other election officials to be ready for, to have a game plan in case someone wearing a a political hat or T-shirt comes in and and wants to start trouble. And the, um, you know, the thing is that they, that person who's trying to cause trouble has a right to vote, but they also don't have a right to, um, to, to scare and threaten other voters. So it really is, it's complicated questions that these election officials are grappling with. And a lot of them, you know, people who started this work 10 years ago, never expected to, to have to experience this. This is not what they signed up for. What are the states, or if you have this information, what, what are the top two or three states or noted states that are having the most issues that you've been able to find yeah. in your research? So uh, it's understandably usually the swing states that are um, having a lot of issues. Those are the states that people are watching uh, the most closely to see who our next president is going to be. And um, and therefore, it's, it's Pennsylvania and Georgia and North Carolina. Um, and then also, you know, we saw um, in Washington state someone – um, set fire to a drop box where people are, are putting votes. So it is the swing states, but I think that these these threats can happen anywhere, and not just threats, but actual actions. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with the, the votes that were burned in that um, drop box, um, but, but it is certainly concerning. What are your uh, thoughts about what's what's next? So let's just let's, let's sort of you know put ourselves in the future. We get through this election cycle, the national election, the state le- elections, the local, and all that. We get through this cycle and then we go forward. Uh, what do you think needs to happen? Maybe on a federal level, I don't know if that's even going to be a possibility. But not to give you too loaded of a question, what do you think is next, and what do you think that um, the government? federal, state, local should be doing to, to affect this as we go forward? Mm-hmm. Well, some states have already uh, gotten a good start um, in Colorado, which is um, where previously a, um, a, a fake elector um, tried to tamper with ballot machines. Colorado responded to that by, um, by shoring up their um, Laws. They made it a um, a felony to tamper with voting equipment. They made it um, illegal to bring guns close to um, to election sites, things like that. So I think part of it is is increasing the penalties and increasing the awareness of the penalties for doing things that scare people 
about their right to vote um, and tamper with election integrity. Um, and so we're already seeing that underway. Um, and and also, you know, I think it's great that um, so many people from that participated in the January 6th attack have been um, convicted and sentenced to uh, to time in prison for their actions. So I do hope that that those things are reminding people that, you know, there are consequences for trying to interfere in, in safe and secure elections that, you know, Donald Trump might not um, ever see prison time for um, instigating the January 6th attack. But if you participate in, in such a thing, you will. And so it's, I think it's really just about shoring up those um, those penalties for, for doing things like that. Yeah, the t- that that may help with the deter- the deterrence that's needed uh, to get folks to keep to, to to use their right brain. I don't mean their right or left brain, but the correct brain when it mm-hmm. comes to this stuff. I love the way you put position that, Abby. Donald Trump may not do some do any time for his his deeds, but your behind is going to go to jail and be sitting there with with some folks you don't want to be sitting with necessarily. What do you? Yeah, and if Trump doesn't win, he can't pardon you. <laughs> right, right. That, exa- Ooh, that's a that's a that's a uh, that's a slogan. If Trump doesn't win, he, he can't pardon you. I like that. I have to write that down. Abby, that's an article title. Listen to me telling you what to do. You're the you're the reporter and the journalist. Uh, <laughs> but it is actually a good title. Um, so, Abby, what what are you working on next? What what, what do you have on your um, your next two, three, six months of work that you're going to be uh, doing? Well, you know, I can't really think ahead to the next two months because uh, I feel like I'm, I'm preoccupied by the next two weeks. Um, but uh, I'm working on a couple things. Um, one piece that I hope to get out uh, today or tomorrow is kind of a um, a warning, laying the um, laying out the stakes of what uh, conservative far right groups and even the Republican National Committee are doing right now. They are. Uh, preemptively before the election, filing a bunch of lawsuits um, that kind of plant the seeds that that election integrity is screwed up uh, so that after the election is over, if they don't like the results, they can point to these lawsuits and say, hey, we pointed out these these issues a long time ago. Um, and so the, the lawsuits largely are, are disingenuous. They've been thrown out in federal and state courts. Um, but I think the, the strategy is like throwing spaghetti against the wall to see what sticks. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I think that it's it's important to know what the intention of these lawsuits are and um, and understand that there's a difference between, you know, like anyone can can file a, a legal complaint, a lawsuit in court. That doesn't mean that what they're alleging has actually happened. Um, but the courts have kind of an air of credibility about them. The court process does. And so people see lawsuits and sometimes um, just believe them. And so uh, my, my piece is kind of detailing why, um, why you shouldn't necessarily um, read into these lawsuits except to, to realize that, um, that in a lot of cases they're disingenuous and designed to, to sow doubt. Um, so that's my next piece. And then I'm, I'm working on a, a piece about kind of what we talked about at the beginning, um, the changing uh, journalism and media landscape. Um, on election night, I will be um, stationed at Scripps News in Atlanta, Georgia. Wow. Um, they are a news um, company that um, has been hit by struggles with advertising due to the hyperpolarized environment we find ourselves in. And so they're they're faced with having to make a bunch of layoffs after the election. And so I'm kind of writing about, you know, what that means for them and, and how they continue to be a news operation with a significantly smaller staff going forward, but also what that means for news consumers going forward. In future presidential elections, uh, we very well may find ourselves with with less access to uh, to journalism, and um, I'm writing about the implications uh, for democracy if that happens. That is powerful, powerful stuff, Amy. Coming from an old head like me, who's loved to has always loved to read magazines over the years. As I said at the beginning, um, 
You're doing the Lord's work, as a phrase would go, because you're in a you're in a an, in an industry and a business right now that's needed. It's so needed in terms of information, cogent information uh, that that's that's suffering from the, the the contraction of the industry. But I applaud you for Abby hanging in there and still bringing us the great information that you do. I'm glad that I follow you on social media and I'm going to continue to do that. So um, watch for my comments every now and again, if I specifically say that's Abby V giving you guys the, uh, the real business, but um, thanks for being with us. How can, as we wrap up, Abby, how can folks find you? Yeah. So my uh, Twitter or X handle, I'm going to keep calling it Twitter though, is <laughs> Abby Vesoulist, uh, V-E-S-O-U-L-I-S. Uh, that's my handle pretty much everywhere. And then also, of course, I would love for people to subscribe to Mother Jones. It's, it's like less than three coffees a year or something like that. So it's a pretty good deal. Yeah. That's excellent. All right. So listen, uh, we're going to have you back in the future after the election. We'll get you back on and talk about what's happening now and that in that moment, uh, since you really couldn't forecast too far forward. But we will definitely have you back in the future and talk some more. Abby, thank you for being with us this morning on Choose Views. And thank you for being part of our work to keep the message out there. Thanks for having me. All right, Abby, have a great day and a great weekend. You too. Bye now. All right, guys. We're going to take a quick break, 773-763-9278. When we get back, we'll take your calls, and we'll talk a little bit, a little bit more before we wrap up today's show. You're listening to Choose View with Richard Chu on WCPT 820, Chicago's progressive talk. Hey, guys, welcome back to Choose View, 773-763-9278. Lines are full. We're going to get to your calls in a moment. Just a couple things I want to make sure to some house cleaning, quick house cleaning items. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Karen from Facebook Live says, good morning and thank God it's Friday. Election day is almost here. We can't just take anything for granted like we did in 2016. Fight and fight and vote blue. Thank you for that uh, for that, that uh, post, Karen. And I'd like to try to read these as much as we can um, when we have them. Also on Monday's show, uh, we're going to have uh, Dr. Stephen uh, Zanakis with us in the uh, 6.30 hour to talk about uh, you know, the further in the conversation about being a good leader, what it takes to be a good president. Uh, Greg Schwarzy, who's running uh, for office out in DuPage County, and Christopher Amen, who is a special agent in charge with the Bureau of Alcohol, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives here in the Chicago Field Division, and I'll be talking with him about just some things that he's anticipating with this uh, with the upcoming election day and the time between election and, and inauguration. So um, that's who we'll have this this upcoming week, and then Tuesday's election day. Like we said, I'll be um, out with Joan and Patty out at the Bricklayers Hall in Elmhurst. Uh, on election day and lots of coverage on the day after then thursday we've got tom hartman that'll be with us as well so just giving you guys a little bit of the lay of the land next week make sure you're going to heartlandsignal.com to check out the work we're doing there um let's just dive into the deep end of the pool we got we got them stacked over here let's go to kathy and clarendon hills kathy good morning and welcome to choose views Good morning, Richard. Thank you so much for letting me speak. Um, You mentioned at the beginning of your program what the biggest takeaway was, and I agree with all of your listeners. But um, for all of your listeners, I have something that you can do right now this weekend that would be inspirational and very positive. Write a personal letter and date it this weekend before the election to your children and mostly to all of your grandchildren about its meaning for their futures. Letters are keepsakes. They come from the heart. They're personal. It becomes a piece of history in a personal sense toward them. It can be a cherished memory to all the heroic efforts, no matter how small, that you have given to this election in order to get Madam President in office. My, my grandchildren are nowhere near adulthood yet. But for me, to pass on a personal moment of history to them in hopes that they can participate in their futures toward democracy, that's what I want to do for them, and that's what I'm leaving them. And that's all I have to say. 
Well, that's a lot to say, uh, Kathy. And as always, we appreciate you calling and contributing to the show. That means a lot to us here. So keep up the good work. Stay focused this weekend and do what you keep doing what you've been doing, Kathy. Appreciate all your all your help. Thanks, Richard. You got it. All right, let's go to Will down in North Carolina. Will, welcome to Choose Views. How are you this morning? Hey, good morning, Mr. Chu, Brother Chu. You're a great man, and I appreciate all your drive and your effort. I was just calling to say because it was, you know, I were listening to Karen and WCPT. They got, you guys got me through the pandemic and stuff, and I was even thinking about, I'm at work right now, you know, with all that pesky infrastructure and everything. There's a lot of building going on in my job and stuff. But, um, you know, I was just thinking about how, like, during the pandemic, <laughs> it was, uh, I call it P. Gazi. Okay. Um, it's the biggest collection. The biggest collection of the littlest P words and <laughs> with the weakest insurrection in history. With the weakest insurrection in history. And, like, so ever since then, you know, I've been, like, like really just glad to see how, you know, I want to say that black men, all these black men out here are standing on the front. We're not, we're not the ones out here. Some of, some are gone. Some are gone. Like this only 9%, like Tom Harmon showed yesterday. It's 90% of black men who are voting, who care about America, and we're standing on the wall like Mr. Eugene Goodman, who was there at the insurrection, you know, holding it down for everybody. So, like, don't yeah. listen to half these guys. I mean, I'm looking on YouTube. Some of these guys are going out of their mind. Man. I, know. I don't know. It's like the fifth column. It's like the fifth column stuff or whatever, man. But anyway, <laughs> I also want to say, you're like... <laughs> You're like, uh, you're like, you're like, you're, you're taking on the mantle of the black eagle, but you're really not the black eagle. You're more like the black crane. Oh, so like, man. it's pretty cool. Cause you know, it's, it was just interesting. Like I, I've been enjoying your show since the family meeting and like, like Tara Devlin and stuff. They really got me through. I used to work at the airport and it was mad because you know, it was nobody in the airport. And like, I was there, I was making this guy and I was the only one there. And like, you know, it was just wild how you didn't see nobody. But then by the time you would see people, it would be, uh, painfully, people in, you know, their funeral clothes and stuff. And it, it hurt, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. he was in the diet at the time. And this jerk, I still pray for him. But he should have never been in the office. He should have got, he should have been, he should have never gotten there when he started. When he got the, um, inaugural, when he got elected, he should have gave up because he's a traitor. Yeah. And it's ridiculous how people, and he's a pedophile. And that guy, Stephen Miller, we have to watch him because He's the closest thing to the Antichrist. <laughs> but anyway, um, I, I just I just want to say, you know, I appreciate your show. I appreciate I listen to Stephanie, uh, Randy Rose, Tom Harmon. I've been listening my whole life. Even uh, Ed Schultz, I've been listening. It's been amazing, man. Like, even when I be playing video games, I'll just be listening to the cast and everything like that. Well, see, I just here, listen to Dick Gregory and stuff. Here's what you got to yeah, do. Here's what you got to do. Man. Here's what you got to do. First of all, well, thank you for that, those wonderful comments and your observation. <laughs> but this is what you have to do brother this is what you have to do i want you to harness that excitement and that energy and make sure in these next few days as best you possibly can that you yeah. that you make sure that, do better. that you get no 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 you're not no, doing better isn't it you're doing great just keep doing what you're doing and helping those people who might need some help getting to the polls or in this last little bit yeah. they, you know they're 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 not quite there yet Make sure you're open, your, 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 your tentacles are, are open, your, your spidey senses are open yes. for people who might Gotta need be. another encouraging word in these last few days, or they might yeah. need some literal help to get to a poll. That's the thing you can do to yeah. get this to this finish line. I promise you, if you do that, Will, you, real, you're, you're going to feel real proud about your efforts. I promise I you that. Yeah, because I, I don't, like you, like you said, you don't want to be angry Tuesday morning. You know what I mean? Wednesday morning. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because like, I know I'm going to feel good. Like, I was, I'm was, i glad to hear about how the ladies and stuff, and just the men, you know what I'm saying? We're standing up for ladies, too, because, like, that's messed up. The women, you know, it's ridiculous, man. I know. I just, yeah, and I, then the children from, the, the children from this, the wall, all these kids have been missing, and they had them in those... Those on the floor with the aluminum. Yeah, with blankets. The blankets. It's crazy. Stuff, man. It's crazy. We're not yeah, going back. You know. We're not going back, Will. No, no, <laughs> we're, we're not, not going back, brother. I feel you, bro. All right, man. I appreciate it, man. I'm gonna get back to work. All right, I appreciate man. it, bro. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a great Will. day. God you bless too. you. too, brother. Uh -huh. Be safe. Wow. Harness that energy, Will. Harness that energy and move it in a direction to help somebody in these last few days that might need a little bit of push to get across the finish line. I promise you that's going to reap you great reward. Uh, let's real quickly go to Dave in San Francisco. Hey, Dave, what's going on? 
Okay, thanks, Richard. Um, you know, it's sometimes very easy to not spend money. And in the case of Project 2025, that's a, the, the sponsors of it are some of the biggest money there is. Of course, the Koch brothers are part of it, the Heritage Foundation, the uh, uh, but it, Leonard Leo has taken billions, hundreds of billions, apparently, from uh, these biggest corporations. So we've got to find a way to to boycott those boys and uh, before and after election day. And what makes it uh, wilder is that they get a nonprofit status to basically rip apart America. Yeah. You know, to rip apart the safety uh, safety net. And so, yeah, we need to find every one of those companies that are sponsoring Project 2025 and boycott them. Run them out of, run them out of business. See, David, that's what, and, I'm, talk- that, that's what I'm talking about. I got, I, I'm, I'm going to interrupt you respectfully. That is ex- your last two sentences are a grand slam in the bottom of the night. That's exactly what we have to do. Um, I'm sure you are one of age chronologically, and I say that respectfully as well, that understands the power of protest and understands the power of boycotting. And that is exactly the thing that we uh, I go back to what Sue, uh, who was with us earlier, uh, Sue Cohen said about the power of that collective energy. David, you couldn't have said it any better about those companies, those 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 uh, corporate chieftains that are using their corporate wealth to influence the elections in society. Yeah, that, that, that's what we got to do. I mean, you're right on about that. Sure. Well, and you know, I'm not sure if Illinois has got a uh, secretary of state race, but every one of the counties have got county clerks, yeah. and those county clerks can yank business licenses. Well, sure. Uh, if, if, they're know, mis- if, they're, if they're using their resources in a way that is um, not, not, not even illegal, but questionable, I do think that's where secretaries of states can do a, a deeper job or a deeper dive. But you want to know something that, that the AGs and the secretaries of states have a lot more power than people recognize. And we, I, I think in a state like California, which you're from, in a state like Illinois, we do want to encourage them to... You know, to push a little bit harder when businesses are getting a little bit out of line. I, I, I agree with you there on a, on, a, on a number of levels. So that's a, two good points, Dave. I mean, you're going to go for the tri, trifecta this morning? <laughs> well, why not? Yeah, it, it just the, the whole idea that in 1776, the issue was colony, uh, that the colonies were basically taking the money from, uh, from the development of each uh, part of the 13 colonies, and then it would get sucked back to London, and they would never reinvest locally. Well, that's what Project 2025 is all about. They're, they're colonizing, recolonizing America, and there's no reason to give money to colonizers. That's right. It, it's, it's uh, again, so you did go for the trifecta and you succeeded. So, <laughs> Dave, listen, man, I, as, as always, we appreciate your call and your contribution to the show. Um, and, and like always, I say to you, thank you for, for supporting what we do. Um, I'm going to grab another call as we're running out of time today. But Thank you. Th- thanks, Dave. Have a great weekend, okay? All right, bye now. Uh, David, David is like the professor. Uh, he's the other professor of, of many topics. He's uh, always on point. So thank you, Dave, for your, your contribution. Let's grab one more call before we go to our final break. Let's go to Floyd up in Skokie. What's going on, my man? How are you? How have you been? I'm going I'm to improve your vocabulary today, Richard. Uh, 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 I'm going me... to give you a term. Mama luxion, okay? <laughs> Mama luxion. You know how protective Jewish mothers are of their kids. They're well, well, really known for being overprotective. But mom election is the advice that a Jewish mother gives to her kids to protect them. Okay. That's mom election. Now, I want you to think of another thing. Doug Emhoff's kids call Kamala Mamala. Yep. What does that tell me as a Jewish guy? They love her as a mother. Yep. They call her Mamala. They respect her because she watches out for them, just like she's going to watch out for this country. Like Golda Meir watched out for Israel. Yep. This is our Golda Meir. 
We, when, when I grew up, I mean, you and I grew up in some similar uh, ways, Floyd. I just know from conversations that we've had when you called in, um, the, the, the Af- black mothers would, would call it mother wit. And yes. mother wit. And so that was the big one in, in our in, in, in my family, in our greater community. And I will I'm not going to take anything from any moms of any communities, because I know that the his, the Hispanic, Latino, Mexican, Puerto Rican moms have that same kind of love and protection that Irish moms That's, do. Here's yeah, the point. Absolutely. Here's the point I'm yeah. making, Floyd. And, and I know you're going to appreciate this. Guys, we are at a time. When men have got to recognize that your first leader, your first uh, supporter, the first person that was in your corner from the day that you got here was your mother. And that means she's a woman. And it's doggone time, way past time, that we pull ourselves up and say, let's get behind this woman who is going to be exactly what Floyd just described and looking out for all of our country. It's about time, boys and girls. So, Floyd, I appreciate you bringing that to us, man. I really do. We're going to hit a quick break, Floyd. Thanks for the Thank thanks for the voc- vocabulary expansion. I'll, uh... <laughs> All right, Floyd, good to, he- good to hear your voice, man. I'm glad you're doing well. Have a super weekend, okay? All right, my man, Floyd's gone. Music's playing. Got to shut up, Richard. Got to go to break. 773-763-9278. Guys, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Choose Views with Richard Chu on WCPT 820 AM, where facts matter. Take it away, Richard. Hey, guys. Welcome back to Choose Views, 773-763-9278. After Floyd's call, Alex and I were in here cutting it up about, uh, you know, growing up in the neighborhood and, and, and the moms knowing each other and making sure that everybody acted right. So uh, you guys have probably heard me say this before, but you couldn't go over somebody else's house and act a fool. Back in the day, the moms had had uh, carte blanche to get after you if you did. So uh, uh, appreciate and shout out to Floyd for uh, reminding us of that uh, th- that mothering guidance that we've all had. And uh, I want to give a shout out to my family, my my extended family. We uh, earlier this year, actually the first day of of this show, um, lost my mother in law and great woman, absolutely great woman. Raised seven kids and children, all wonderful uh, uh, in-laws of mine. And uh, just a shout out to my to my late mother-in-law, who was just she was a stone cold mom. That's how I'll put it. She was a stone cold mom. So we miss you. But we uh, we cherish you. So as we're talking about moms, uh, listen, guys, we got work to do this weekend. And that is to make sure that you were reaching out to everybody you can. In these last few days, Um, I asked Karen Byrne to be with us earlier and Sue Cohen to be with us to talk about these last few days and uh, their closing arguments, if you will. And uh, my closing argument is one of it's it it could be complicated, uh, but it's simple. And that is if you and this is not just a rhetorical question, if you appreciate the country that we live in and you value it. And you want it to continue to grow and move forward, as we actually have during these last three and a half years of the Biden-Harris administration. The now is that time when you lean in a little bit harder. Stop and think, what can I do this weekend? Is there somebody in Florida that I can reach out to? Is there somebody in Georgia, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania? any of the swing states, I can go down the list, but you know what they are in terms of Michigan, Wisconsin, uh, Nevada, Arizona, uh, North Carolina. Now, is there a race that I can help out in? Can I can I reach out to Colin Allred's campaign uh, and, and, and provide him with a little bit of added support? Can I reach out to John Tester's campaign up in Montana uh, or Jackie Rosen's in Nevada or Sherrod Brown's in Ohio? Or Angela also Brooks in Maryland. Can I do a little bit more to help there? Can I reach out to Sean Harris's campaign this final weekend? Uh, can I reach out to Debbie McCarcel Powell and see what I can do this weekend to help her out? Uh, Gloria Johnson down in in, uh, in uh, Tennessee. Can I reach out to her so we can send uh, uh, what's that woman's name? I can't even think of her now. Uh, send her home. 
anything you can do, Lucas Coons, these these are the key Senate races that we've got to hold on to and win. And there's some House races as well. But we want to make sure this weekend, the simple task is just to ask yourself the question, what can I do in these closing these closing days? It's not too late. It's just not too late. There are people who literally, as, as, as my uh, friend Rick, who called in from Florida, said, there are people who in these last couple of weeks have changed their mind in terms of having been a voting Republican for all their lives, and they're going to vote differently this time around. There are people who are, as, as Rick said, um, never voted. They're going to vote this time. They're going to vote for Vice President Harris. Because I think at the end of the day, the, the, the power of us in terms of, you know, U.S. citizens and the greater humanity is that we want our lives to be better and we want the lives of those around us to be better. And in this time we're, we're, that we're in on this national level, on this national election, I think we have to be reminded of that. And it's important that you not forget that at the end of the day, as Vice President Harris has been saying for all of this campaign is that we have a lot more in common than we have apart. And we cannot allow uh, people to, to divert us and divert our attention from that. Your issue might be guns. You might be thinking they're going to take my guns away. I've got friends who are gun owners and they're, and they've said things like, you know, they can't stand, uh, they can't stand Trump, but at least he's not going to take my guns away. Meaning that by assuming that Biden would, well, that's not going to happen. It didn't happen. If they said that Obama was going to come for your guns, Obama didn't come for your guns. Biden hasn't come for your guns. Sensible gun legislation is what they're talking about. There's people who say that, you know, we're killing babies with abortion. No, we're not killing babies with abortion. Ironically, gun, you know, uh, un, un, um, not properly managed or common sense gun laws is causing babies to die at a higher rate than any other thing for child, uh, child death in America. That's what's killing babies. That's one of the things. So abortion doesn't, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a, an issue that should be not in the hands of the courts. It should be in the hands and in the, in the, the mindsets of the doctors that are helping women decide what they have to do when it comes to reproductive care. So that could be your issue. But look at it from the perspective of somebody else could be impacted by this in a way that, that would be harmful to them if we don't get the right legislation in place and have the right people managing that legislation. Your issue could be the southern border. Don't believe the hype that people are coming across the border and killing folks. Some of the most uh, law-abiding folks that come to this country as immigrants come from the southern border because they don't want to go back to where they came from. That's a fact, guys. That's not my anecdotal opinion. And so why are we going to put folks in cages and babies in cages? And as as uh, Will said from North Carolina and, and, and you know, Mylar blankets over them. Let's take care of our children. They're all of our children, y'all. They're all of our children. And folks that are coming here for a better life, we get, this is a big old country. <laughs> we got a lot of space here. You know, we got some extra rooms, literally and figuratively. So let's embrace that in a cogent way. Yeah, we need to improve our immigration, but immigration just isn't about, quote, Mexican coming from Mexico. It's folks coming from all over the world to try to get here. Immigration is not about the southern border and Mexicans coming to take our stuff. That's a, that's I can't curse, but trust me, I got some salty words for that. That's the biggest line of craziness. And if you're a Christian, so-called Christian or person of any faith, and you want to denigrate people by calling them this, that or the other because they come from a different place, you're the problem. Because somebody don't look like you, doesn't talk like you, quote unquote, you're the problem. You can't be on Sundays a good a, a, a church going person of faith, a Christian, if you will, in this country, Christian nationalist. You can't show up in church on Sunday praising God and all the rest and then turn around and Monday through Saturday acting like a dog on fool and mistreating people. It just doesn't work. It's not congruent. It's a little bit of insanity, to be honest with you. So stop, you know, denigrating the folks that are coming to this country from any border. That might be your issue, but get past that. As Joe Biden, President Biden says, this is the United States of America, and there's nothing we can't do when we work hard and do it together. If it's the economy, our economy is moving forward. It's been doing well for a minute. 
We have to continue to provide the right. We have to put the right people in the right place so that we continue to move our economy forward locally here in Chicago, statewide, regionally and nationally. It's not perfect. And there's some decisions that our leaders are making that we need to help them make better decisions when it comes to our economy, particularly when it comes to taxes and when it comes to income and when it talks to people, talks about people getting paid a better wage. But if that's your issue, figure out how you can be part of the process of making it better. Lowering wages isn't going to make it any better. Making sure that people are getting paid a fair, if not better wage is what's going to make it better because we're a consumer driven economy. Okay. Air quality, the environment. I mean, you cannot want to live in a community or live in an area, live in a world where you can't breathe and your water's nasty. I mean, how, how, how are you going to live in that? So get out of the way of, you know, progress when it comes to our environment. Let's do things that are going to improve our environment so we can live better, breathe better, walk better, drink better water, eat better food. The list goes on. And so it's, it's upon me to say this to you guys in this final weekend so that you can walk with your head held high these next few days and make absolutely certain that you're doing the thing to help get people to the polls, making a few more phone calls, donating money. Uh, (laughs) At this point, I guess sending out letters may or may not be effective because of the, the delivery of the mail. But the things that you can do now that are tangible, there's still some more doors you might be able to knock on. But don't sit back and complain. Uh, like Will said, on, on Tuesday morning, you want to wake up uh, excited and happy, not with, full of, not with the regret that you could have done more. That you, that, that's unacceptable, guys. It's just unacceptable. And then the, one of the last things I'll say is this. If there's any way that you can help someone get to the poll, f- find a way to do that. And when you go to the poll, if you haven't voted yet, if you're going to be early voting or voting day of, Please make sure that you're respectful, very respectful to the people that are working there. Don't give them no trouble. And if you see somebody that's trying to give them trouble, stand in the void for those people who are working at the polls because they're there doing, you know, political God's work to make sure that people have a place to vote. Do, do, do Do the right thing, which is to stand up for somebody that's doing the thing to help you. And I will say this with, from, with all of my heart. I appreciate you guys having been with us these last few weeks. I know we've been, you know, wash, rinsing and repeating, but that's because we got, you know, we got work to get done. Get out and vote this weekend if you're early voting. Get out and help people. Do those last things that you can do. Uh, we're going to have a busy week next week. I'm looking forward to being with you guys. And with that, I will say, take a deep breath, guys, and make your life count. We'll see you next week.